So when you hear people that can survive or go on four or five hours of sleep a night, that's a very small percentage of people, very small, that actually thrive on that. For the rest of them, it's just become their normal and they're still having physiological effects. And it will eventually catch up at some point. Or they don't realize how much better they might feel if they were able to get more sleep. So yes, some people can go on that, but most people cannot. And it leads to hormonal changes that can cause weight gain and also depression or feelings of sadness. So the reason why it can increase weight gain is because when we're sleeping is when we're releasing a lot of the important hormones. That's when our thyroid hormone is being released, growth hormone. So if you exercise and you're trying to build your muscles but you're not sleeping enough, growth hormone is released when you sleep. Serotonin, melatonin, all of these hormones are released when you're asleep. So when you're not getting enough of it over time, you'll need to compensate. So circadian rhythm is extremely important. And we're doing things now to disrupt our circadian rhythm. And when I say now is in, now is in society. We used to you know, wake up and go to sleep with the sun. Now we are in the sun all day and night because we look at devices until we go to bed, right? So that artificial light that's going into our eyeballs actually suppresses our melatonin and disrupts our circadian rhythm. And it's called blue light from the screens. So there's a few things you can do <clears throat> with blue light. One is to um, get a filter for your laptop. There's also something called flux. justgetflux.com, and it will warm your screen when the sun goes down. It's based on your GPS location settings. On an iPhone, you can turn it into night shift mode. And you can also wear Blu-ray blocking glasses, which I'll talk about in a minute. But it is a physiological fact that looking at devices at night can disrupt your circadian rhythm. And they have found a very strong correlation between that and blood sugar and the incidence of type 2 diabetes. And this has just been linked in the last couple of years. One thing you can take to find out what time of day you're most productive, but also what you think your natural circadian rhythm might be, is a morningness, eveningness questionnaire. And I'll send you the link in the handout. So it, you answer some questions, and it tells you approximate time or your natural bedtime. Mine is around 10 o'clock. And your natural wake time. Because we all have a wake drive and a sleep drive. And there are some things that can move our wake drive forward and backwards and sleep drive forward or backwards. But also, in order to wake you up, if you need to use like a light, bo light box or something like that, it'll even tell you when you want to start doing that. So I am a definite morning person. I am much more productive in the morning. And I actually have a rule that I don't schedule clients before 10 a.m. 10 a.m. is when I start my coaching clients because I want to use the best time for me. So my very focused work that I have, like, strat like any kind of business strategy or writing, I do first thing in the morning because I'm a definite morning person. Most people are morning people, but there are some people who get more creative in the afternoon or in the evening. So we already talked about Blu-rays as a sleep sabotager. Caffeine can be. And caffeine, even if you can go to sleep right after you drink an espresso or a cappuccino, what happens is, is you don't hit deep sleep as much as you would if you didn't. 
So it's not that the sleep as much that it affects, it's your deep sleep cycle that caffeine can affect. Temperature is definitely one. I should have had a screenshot with Celsius, sorry, Fahrenheit. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's hot. But you want it to be cool when you sleep. The cooler, the better. And then, of course, noise. I, heard, I, I asked Hattie if there were people that rode motorcycles here last night, because I kept hearing Vroom! outside my window, and it was just sports cars. Yep. So there must have been no one on the street, because people were going very fast. But the, but the noise, outside noise, or even inside noise. Sleep aids. Same thing um, with coffee, in that, well, not the same as because sleep aids will help you go to sleep, possibly, but they don't let you get your deep sleep. So when you take, there isn't a prescription drug on the market at this point that will let you hit your deep sleep cycle. And for a sleep drug like Ambien, and I know this because I, I studied it, my background is in clinical research, pharma, biotech, medical device. Ambien was one of the drugs that we studied you fall asleep 15 minutes faster. That was the significant dis difference. But it doesn't let you hit your deep sleep, which is why you wake up feeling tired or groggy. So sleep aids, if you can get off of them, much better because you want to hit your deep sleep. <clears throat> so what can we do to sleep better? So any kind of white noise, right? This is, this is the white noise machine I use. When I'm on the road, I use the Calm.com app because it has white noise. Um, sleep masks, which I gave one away so far. And that is called Acoustic Sheep Sleep Phones. And it's soft headphones that plug into your phone or they have Bluetooth, but the speakers are flat so you can lay with them. And they're great for travel. Or if you sleep next to someone who snores and, and you need to kind of block them out but at the same time listen to music, this works. They work. Lavender has been proven to help be relaxing, so infusing lavender. Um, magnesium is something that you can take at night. It's a, it's a little bit of a muscle relaxant, but that can help you with sleep. And then cold and hot showers or baths. So a lot of people think warm or hot bath, but actually it's not the warmth or the hot, it's the temperature change. So when you're coming, you know, when your body's cooling off from a hot bath or warming up from a cold shower, it can work. So last night I did a sauna, I did a steam, I did a cold, I did the hot, I did it all. And I thought I had a slide on jet lag, but I must, have, I must not have saved this version. Because I'm feeling it right now, let me tell you. Um, but since you do travel, there are a couple things about jet lag. So one is, again, fasting on a plane, or fasting during that time has been shown to help with jet lag. But also getting in bright light as soon as you can when it is the natural time for wherever you are is the number one thing to help you. So I got here at, I think I got to my hotel at one in the morning. So I did want to go, I mean, you'd want to go to sleep. But if I flew all night and I got here at like five or six in the morning, I would not want to go to sleep. I would want to get out, be in the sun as soon as I could because I would want it to reset circadian rhythm. 